all right so as i promised as promised we would like to look at the nobel prize winning work of hodgkin and huxley and come up with a mathematical model that describes conduction across the cell membrane and how conduction takes place along a membrane so that a nerve can pass on or propagate from one point to another so would it be possible for some student uh, some volunteer to give a brief overview of uh, a very rapid lightning fast summary of how ionic transport takes place across the neuronal cell membrane would any are there any volunteers manail would you like to give it a shot can you can you use it? yes sir so basically we studied about the uh, we basically studied about the different ion transports and how potential varies along membranes because of that once transport happens and stuff and we also looked at how the gated channels open and we looked at uh, the circuit we by the end of the lecture we analyzed it as a circuit and we did the uh, experiment as well looking at how the changing time uh, changing the resistance would change the time constant and the graph would look as such like that is uh, the gated channel is open when the polarity of the plane so that can be expected in example and the gated channel is open when the polarity of the plane is on the ground there is a polarization on the other side of the plane exposure to the marinated seeds but uh all right so this presents a very nice summary so if i if you would allow me to just recapitulate what's going on uh this is our neuron this is the interior this is the exterior uh, there is a concentration gradient of potassium and sodium ions across the two sides so this is the intra exonic region the intracellular region this is the extracellular region now what happens is when this neuron is excited sodium uh, voltage gated channels open which allow the influx of sodium in the in the resting state the potential inside is negative with respect to the outside because of nernst effects but once sodium ions come in this negative potential goes up at a certain point the sodium activation gates they close down and inactivation gates open and at the same time potassium is seen to outgress from the cell the potassium ions go out and they try to repolarize the neuron all right after some time the uh, voltages are restored to the repolarized state however the concentration of sodium and potassium ions has been reversed so the sodium potassium pump 
then activates and it restores the equilibrium concentrations of sodium and potassium on both sides. And as a result of this process, which we've looked at in detail, if I were to plot with respect to time, the pot potential inside minus the potential outside, in a state of rest, there's a resting potential. And as the sodium voltage gated channels open as a result of some activation, sodium ions come in, this causes an increase in the potential. It might go beyond a certain threshold value. And at that point, the voltage inside reverses. It becomes positive. At some voltage level, the sodium activation gates close, the inactivation gates open, and the potassium voltage gates open, which allow regress of potassium ions. So potassium ions then move outside, and this potential just drops back again. It might overshoot a little bit. This is called the hyperpolarized state, and eventually the sodium and potassium pump brings this back to its resting potential, right? So this is about minus 70 milli millivolts. This could be around minus 50 or minus 55 millivolts. And this can go as high up to 35 millivolts. All right. And remember, I'm talking about the potential inside with respect to outside. This kind of graph is called the action potential. <clears throat> now, what we would like to do is we would like to look at the Hodgkin Huxley model. which won them the 1963 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. And for that purpose, we would like to model this process in terms of an equivalent circuit, an electrical circuit. All right, so today's lecture might, for, for an outsider, might appear like a lecture in circuit analysis, but it's very basic circuit analysis. And all scientists and engineers that I think graduate from SSE should know at least this much. So what we would like to do now is we would like to come up with a certain model, which is called an integrate and fire model of a neuron. <clears throat> and if you're into one of the new fields that are currently making waves in the, in the scientific discipline, which is called neuromorphic computing or neuronal computing, this is really a starting point for that. I wonder if anyone is taking the computational neuroscience course as well in this group. All right. So let's draw an equivalent circuit for this ionic transport. Okay. And we would like to first of all come up with the simpler version. The simpler version is such that suppose <clears throat> I take two rails. This corresponds to the inside of the cell. And this rail corresponds to the outside of the cell. Okay. Now I'm talking about the voltage inside with respect to outside. So I'm considering myself a voltage VM. Okay. This is called the membrane voltage, the voltage across the membrane. Okay. This could be a function of time, by the way. Is it Dwazamantas? All right. Now, uh, so this is really the like the membrane. We're trying to model the membrane. Now we know that this membrane has charge separation. There is positive charge outside, negative charge inside. So it's just acting like a capacitor. So I can put a capacitor between these rails with the capacitance CM, the membrane capacitance, right? Now, another thing is that, of course, the membrane will have some resistance as well. So if ions were to be transported across the membrane, it has to be across a certain resistance. So I can also put a resistance in parallel with the capacitance, Rm. The other thing is that if this neuron is in its resting state, it's in the polarized state, which means there is some potential gradient 
across the membrane. There is some voltage across the membrane, even in its equilibrium state, even when it's de-excited, nothing is happening to it. So how can I, what circuit element do I need to represent this equilibrium voltage? How do you represent voltages in circuits? What, what element, what component do you use? A battery, right? So I can put a battery here, okay? With some voltage V0. All right, so this is a model of a neuron membrane. There is some capacitance, the membrane capacitance, some values of microfarads or nanofarads, and we'll, I'll provide you with a table that has numerical values for these capacitances. Some resistance, because as you know, voltage gated channels open and close. So when a channel is closed, it represents high resistance. When it is open, it represents low resistance. So we can lump all of this behavior into a circuit element. That's what modelers do. They take a complex biological or biophysical process and try to come up with a nice, simple equivalent circuit that describes the same behavior. And that's what Hodgkin and Huxley did. Okay, so there is some resistance, Rm, and there is a battery voltage, V0. So if nothing were happening here, no currents were flowing through across the membrane, then there's no current here. So if this voltage, say this is ground, let's any point could be taken as ground, right? So I'll take the outside to be ground and I'm measuring all, all voltages with respect to the outside. So this is the membrane voltage, Vm, some millivolts or volts with respect to the ground, okay? That's the voltage inside the cell. So if I were to take a cell, right? A neuronal cell and put this in some fluid in a Petri dish or a beaker. And I put an electrode inside the neuron and an electrode outside the neuron and connect them with a voltmeter. I will pick up some voltage. That's the resting potential here, right? This could be for a typical neuron, this would register minus 75 millivolts, where this is taken to be zero volts. All right. So if no current were flowing, no current flowing means that the potential difference is across a resistor. If no current flows through the resistor, the potential difference across this has to be zero. So if this is V naught, this point is at minus 75 millivolts, then this point would also be at minus 75 millivolts because no current is flowing through it. This point will also be at minus 75 millivolts. So this membrane voltage is gonna be at minus 75 millivolts. So this is a true depiction of a neuron at rest. No doubt about it, okay? Now what's gonna happen, so by the way, how do you calculate this voltage? What is V naught? How is it, how do you assign a value to V naught? In this case, yes. If everything is in equilibrium, yes. If no currents are flowing, but if current flows, then there has to be some drop across this resistance as well. So in equilibrium and no currents are flowing, this V naught is the same as this Vm because there is no drop across this resistor. No current is flowing. So by the way, how do you calculate V naught? You've already done that in one of our previous lectures. How is it determined? So it varies from ion to ion. It varies for potassium versus sodium versus chloride versus calcium. Where is this V naught coming from? Hmm? It's the nurse potential. This is simply the nurse potential. And we've derived an expression for the nurse potential. By the way, do start thinking about your projects as well and make up your groups and start coming up with ideas for projects and last time to share, share these ideas with you. All right. So let me change the camera a little bit.
ठीक है सो नाउ हाउ डू वी ट्राई टू सिम्युलेट दिस एक्शन पोटेंशियल वट वी नाउ नीड टू डू वी नीड सम काइंड ऑफ एक्सीटेशन ओके सो दैट एक्सीटेशन कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय अ करंट सोर्स करंट इज रियली द फ्लो ऑफ चार्ज सो इफ आयोन्स आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड आयोन्स आर चार्ज पार्टिकल्स they represent some current being injected into the system the current flowing across a membrane either from inside to outside or from outside to inside so let's add some stimulant stimulus to this circuit of course you don't want the neuron to remain in a resting state forever otherwise it's not interesting and it's not pr practical so what i would now like to do is i take this equivalent model v not here the membrane capacitance here and i just put a current source okay so this represents a source of current let's call that current i okay and the kind of current so we need to we need to describe what this i is so we take a step current so with respect to time this is time zero suppose my current is zero at time t equals zero it takes up a value i not and then immediately goes down to zero suppose this is my stimulus to this neuronal membrane okay and this is represented by this is a plot of i it's zero then it takes a constant value i not and at some time capital t it goes down back to zero so this is my stimulus so pulse all right now what i would like to know is how does this voltage vm change with time and i my expectation is that this voltage should represent my action potential okay so you're trying to build a model so my question is whether this voltage represents an action potential or does it have the potential to represent an action potential all right so we'll have to invoke some basic circuit theory in here and i i'm sure every one of you you would know that if a current is coming into a node and the node represents two branches then the current is split e not equally but it's split in such a fashion that the total current remains constant so let's take this current to be i1 and this current to be i2 so my i is i1 plus i2 and i'm concerned at the moment with this region here okay i'm trying to write a differential equation for what's happening in this region and then i solve that differential equation to find out voltages okay so this might be i'm sure most of you have done differential equations is there anyone who is not familiar with differential equations we've all also done them in this class but is anyone unfamiliar with differential equations first order linear differential equation that's what we're going to do right and this is in fact good some good practice of mathematical modeling a biological system anyway so this is my current could you help me identify so this is a fixed voltage right this is from the nurse potential from the equilibrium voltage could you help me identify what this current is going to be i1 so i'm talking about time greater than 0 and less than capital t so what is my i1 i have to use ohm's law g v not over hmm any other guesses so i just want to find out this current here Let's think about this i give you one minute to think about this ohms law simple ohms law Just begin to speak up. 
or raise your hands if you know the answer. So how do you find a current through a resistor? Find the voltage drop across it. So what's the voltage difference across this resistor? What's the voltage here? Vm, right? So this voltage is Vm. Could be a function of time. What's the voltage here? V0, it's pinned at V0, fixed at V0. So the drop across this is Vm minus V0. So this I is I0 is Vm. The function of time, I'm dropping out the time dependence just for convenience, minus V0, which is fixed over this resistance R. Correct? Now I would like to find out the current through the capacitor, through the arm, the branch that merely contains the capacitor. What is the current through a capacitor? We've already seen that, by the way, in this class, in the previous lecture, perhaps. How do I determine the current through a capacitor? Any ideas? So what's the charge across a capacitor? Charge stored in a capacitor. How is it related to voltage? Mm -hmm. So Q equals C Vm, right? Because the voltage across this capacitor is Vm. Now, how do I get current from charge? I differentiate Q. So I is dQ by dt. C is a constant. D, V, M by DT, correct? So plus C, D, V, M by DT. I'm gonna put a small M here to represent its corresponds to the membrane. If I drop these M just, it's understood that there's a small M with it as well. Now, does this look, look like a differential equation? It does. It's a differential equation in Vm, which is my time varying quantity. So it's derivative of V, a V here, and everything else is a constant, at least for this amount of time. So I can probe this further. <clears throat> I'll go really slow so that we can really build, and, and once you done, done all, written a computer code for all of this, once we've done all the Hodgkin Hodgkin, you'll be really satisfied. All right, so now we have the semblance of a differential equation. I just rearrange a few things, dVm by dt plus one over Rc Vm equals I naught, plus V naught over RC. All right, so just I divide by both sides by C. Okay. So here I have the derivative of V and what do I want to find? What is, when I solve this equation, what do I get as a result? I get Vm as a result. So the act of solving a differential equation leads to some solution. And the solution is Vm would be something, right? And this something is my solution. So now I want to solve this differential equation. It's linear, which means that V appears on its own. We don't have a second power or a third power of V and it's, it happens to be first order. There's only the first derivative, no second derivative. So it's the first order linear differential equation which should be really simple to solve. And if I would like to solve this, remember all of this is a constant. And for the sake of convenience, let's put RC. Now, could you indicate what would be the dimensions of the product of R and C? Time. 
R and C some time. Okay. Uh, and how would you know that? I not over C, so yes. Thank you. So you can just look here. IE is this thing. And you can find out what C is going to be I over DV by DT. This is in volts. This is in time. I is in amperes. Then use Ohm's law as well. You get RC will have the dimensions of time. Okay. So RC is, let's call it some time tau. It's generally called the time constant. And my previous demonstration in class showed the effect of varying this time constant. Phenomenon happen faster or slower if I change this time constant, okay? So this is like a half life or, or how fast or slow a process happens. So I can represent this equation by dVm dt plus Vm over tau equals I naught C plus V naught over tau. Now, all of this, by the way, is a constant here on the right-hand side. Now, when I want to solve a differential equation of this kind, could you give me an algorithm for that, a recipe for that? How will I solve this? Product rule, okay. Right, 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 right. You're absolutely correct. Well, for the first go, you just take the right-hand side, you just ignore the constant and put it equal to zero. You'll get one part of the solution, right? I think that is called the particular integral. So what you would like to do is, now I want to solve this. So dVm by dt plus Vm over tau equals zero, right? So this will give you half of the solution one part of the solution, okay? Now you can just solve this by multiplying both sides by E, T over tau, plus Vm, E, T over tau, tau, equals zero. Right? So what I do is I take the coefficient of this Vm, it's one over tau, multiplied with T and exponentiate it. So this thing is, the coefficient is one over tau. So I put one over tau in the exponent of E and put a time factor here. This is called my integrating factor and I multiply both sides by this integrating factor. That's a recipe an algorithm. Now what I could do, the left-hand side, using product rule, it turns out to be a pure derivative. Pure derivative means it's a derivative of ET, isn't it? It's a pure derivative. And this is equal to zero. I can use product rule here. So now the derivative of something is zero. So this has to be a constant, unknown constant. So this is some unknown constant, capital K. And I take Vm as a function of time. This equals K E minus T over tau. So this is one part of the solution, one part, not all of it. So the solution must have an exponential decay built into it. But we need to find the other part because fortuitously or cunningly, tongue in cheek, we have put this part right hand side to be zero, but it's not zero. But this is a constant nevertheless. So now we would like to come up with a complement, what is called a complementary function in the theory of differential equation when you solve differential equations. You, so we assume, we assume, so if this is a constant, we assume for the second part, we assume that our Vmt 
is some uh, other constant capital A. Okay, let's assume. And we have to find out what this A is going to be. So we put this proposed solution, this is a trial solution, back into our original differential equation, which is here. So the first derivative of this is zero. So A over tau equals I naught over C plus V naught over tau. So if A were a proposed solution, then this algebraic equation must be true. So this means that my A is I naught tau over C but tau over c is just r because tau is rc plus v naught. Nice. Dimensions of voltage, dimensions of voltage. This has the same dimensions as this. So my overall solution, overall, overall, right? This is my overall solution is I just add my two component solutions, my particular integral k e minus t over tau plus I naught R plus V naught. G, G, right? Now we need to get rid of this K somehow or assign a value to it. How do we do that? Some initial conditions. We talk about initial conditions here because we're in the time domain. So at time T equals zero, what is Vm? It's not zero, it's V naught. At time t equals zero before this current has switched on, just before, just as a time, tiny time before zero, zero minus. Just here. This voltage here is, there's no, there's no currents anywhere. So this voltage Vm is simply V naught. Right, so we can use that as our initial condition to find out the constant K. So at time t equals zero, this thing is V naught. At time t equals zero, this thing turns out to be one. E raised per zero is one. K plus I naught R plus V naught this lets me find K. K becomes minus I naught R. This allows me to write Vm as, this is minus I naught R. So I can put I naught R one minus E minus T over tau, right? Plus V naught. Got it? And you can check for your initial condition. When time t equals zero, this becomes equal to one, this disappears and you get V naught. And if you put time t equals infinity, so very long, long, somewhere in the, in the future, this thing becomes equal to zero, e to the power minus infinity is zero, and you have I naught R plus V naught. So now if I were to plot this equation, Right, so I always like plots and sketches. So let's do some plotting here. Time, time. Here is my I, the injected current. The injected current is a pulse of width. This is capital T, right? This time is capital T. And here I would like to plot Vm as a function of time. What will this graph look like? Can anyone come to the blackboard and try to plot this, please? Remember, this is exponential. This is something to do with exponential. 
welcome to come here and see <laughs> what this looks like. DK? Banao? Banao lo kuch nahi hota aajo. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Exactly. At time t equals zero, this is one. So this thing goes away. So your voltage is V naught. V naught. Now that voltage could be positive, negative. It could be anything, right? In the general case, it could be anything. For potassium, it's negative. For sodium, it could be positive. But this curve starts somewhere on this curve, on this line, depending upon V naught. Right? For potassium, this could be negative, or sodium, it could be positive, and so on, depending upon the nurse potential, whether it's positive or negative. And then you have an exponential rise. And that exponential rise is a very nice curve she's drawn. This just asymptotes. And this value here at time t equals infinity is going to be given by this. What is this point? I naught R plus V naught. Right? And overall, this delta V is going to be I naught R. This is like a delta V. Now, uh, just let me give you, since you frequently encounter exponentials, let me give you a quick trick to remember how do we plot this. Okay. Might be useful in some of your other courses as well. <clears throat> so I know that if I would like to plot minus this, this is a decaying exponential, right? There's a minus sign in the exponent. And this, when time t equals zero, this starts off from a value of one and it drops. So as time goes up, there's a negative sign here. So the value goes down and it drops exponentially. Right? If I put an A here, some A here, it starts from A, right? That's it. Now what I have over there is a minus sign with it. So it's prepended with a minus. So I just want to invert this with respect to this time axis. So this curve is minus E minus T over tau, right? With this point being minus one. And now I would like to add one to it. Right, So I just take the entire pink graph and translate it by one unit. So it starts here, right? So this is one minus E minus T over tau. But then I would like to put a big coefficient I naught R in front of this. So I don't want to change the shape of the graph because all the shape lies in the time factor just going to change the size of it. So this thing becomes this, right? Whatever the value of, so instead of asymptoting to one, it goes to I naught R. But then at the end, I would just like to translate this up and down by V naught. So if my V naught is negative, I'll bring all of this down, right? Get this thing. This is my final curve, which Manahil has drawn. So this is I naught R, one minus E minus T over tau plus V naught, where V naught is the amount you have, by, by which you have lowered this graph. So this is an exponential rise. Okay, and that's because of the capacitor. And I showed that effect in a demonstration. Now, the thing that I would like you to notice is the following. The point is that this voltage is 
can keep on growing, but at some point in time, the current drops to zero. At this point in time, the current has dropped to zero. So a differential, again, a differential equation is going to change. So for times greater than t, to the right of t, the differential equation, which I've put in green here, wouldn't have the first time term on the right-hand side. Correct? So it's going to change. So if I were now to solve the differential equation, mm -hmm. so I would like to solve the differential equation for times greater than capital T when the current pulse that is going to the neuron has dissipated, has gone down to zero. For that point in time, the differential equation is going to change in this fashion. DVM dt plus Vm over tau equals V naught over tau. All right. So once again, I will have, so if I put this equal to zero, I will have a K E minus T over tau part. This K is now different from the K that we already have. So let's call it K prime, right? So this is one part of the solution, which is found by equating the right-hand side to zero. The other part, let's assume that my VM is B. So here's a constant here. Let's assume I have the constant Vm equals b. I then insert this trial solution into my differential equation, put this in here. This becomes zero. B over tau is v naught, which simply gives me b equals v naught. So my overall solution for this regime is k prime e minus t over tau plus v naught. And now I would need to have the appropriate initial value conditions to find out this K prime. Now, what are the appropriate initial value conditions? At T equals capital T, what would be the voltage? Uh huh. I not R plus V not no, we don't know. No, it's not going to be I not. That's the, so what's the voltage at this point? You don't know. It depends upon whether your curve could be something like this. You don't know what tau is. So you just have to insert T equals capital T in here to find out what the voltage is going to be. It depends upon what's your period of the pulse. How does it compare? How do T and tau compare? Which one is greater and how great? How much great, right? So this pulse could just stop here. The tau should be, would be long enough that you wouldn't see any appreciable change from the resting potential. The tau could be really fast as well. If the capacitance is small of the membrane, tau could be really fast. So you can't say that it has asymptoted to its you know, I not R plus V not value. It could be anything. So just like to put capital T in here to find out what the voltage is going to be and find the appropriate initial conditions at this snapshot in time. Got it? So let's do that. So at time t equals capital T, my Vm from the previous section of the graph, it's a piecewise continuous function here that we're talking about, is I not R E, oh sorry, I not R one minus E minus, now small t has to be replaced by capital T over tau plus V naught. But this must equal K prime 
E minus capital T over tau plus V naught. So this, I can just cancel out the V naughts. K prime turns out to be I naught R. I just take this to the other side. This becomes E capital T over tau minus one. I divide this by E minus T over tau, I get E this part to your tau minus one, right? So this is my K prime. So in this region here, my voltage Vm as a function of time for T greater than capital T when the injection current into the membrane has gone off is given by K prime, which is this thing, I naught R E E minus T over tau. Now this is small t. This is the running variable, time variable. This is some fixed point in time. Plus V naught. And what is this going to look like if I were to draw the graph? So let's try to plot this. Isn't all of this a constant? This is a constant, right? Because capital T is a constant, tau is a constant. All of this is a constant. Now a constant being multiplied by an exponential decay. And this is my exponential decay here. And this constant is nothing but The constant, uh, let me put this constant in blue here, this thing. This constant is nothing but the value of the voltage here, right? So after this point, I decay, right? And I decay, what is, what do I decay to? To V naught, I decay back to V naught. Right, so when I put t equals infinity, everything the first term, all of it goes to zero. So I decay back to v naught. So let me redraw this graph so that we can make sense of what's going on here. Time. Time I pulse of current at capital T, the pulse goes to zero. And this process, by the way, might repeat itself. Could repeat itself. As it happens in the heart, for example, there is a periodic stimulus. So there's a possibility of repetition. And if I were to plot Vm, the membrane voltage, I start off from some V naught, the resting potential, depending upon the capacitance I get here, I might have reached the asymptote or might have not reached the asymptote, depending upon what my decay constant, the tau is, and what is this switching time. When the current goes to zero, I just get an exponential decay back again the process might repeat itself. So this is not quite an action potential, but it's resembling. So you have a resting potential, you get to a positive value, you, all the voltage reverses, and then you can improve upon this model. So now we're going to improve upon this model in the next class. The thing that happens when you do this experiment in a, in a in a Petri dish, in the laboratory, you put a neuron cell in a, in a beaker of buffer solution, put electrodes inside and outside, and you look at the voltage as current is injected into, this, into, the, into the cell in a pulsatile fashion, measure the voltages, you'll get recordings. You'll get record, recordings of the voltage. 
and the recordings look may look like this you get these spikes so these neurons spike they give spikes when you perform an experiment in the lab so we have to add another spike generator to this model if we were to corroborate our findings with the neuron uh, with what we see in the laboratory but th this is more technical detail if i have a current source let's come back to our circuit and let me finish off there <clears throat> this is my membrane some some resistance here and a resting potential some capacitance across the membrane i inject current i can have a voltage that reverses its sign and can simulate an action potential now in the Hodge, hodgkin huxley model we have an arm or a branch for sodium channels a branch for the potassium channels and a branch for all others perhaps okay and these resistances are no longer constant they switch open and switch off they are voltage dependent resistors that's what is meant by a voltage dependent gate a resistance that changes with voltage so we can have this resistance variable and that variable, the knob of that variability is controlled by this potential. So we have a branch for sodium, branch for potassium, branch for others like chlorine, calcium, and all others. And then we can come up with a model that simulates neuronal behavior. And that's what we're going to do in the next class. By the way, as a homework problem, I'm actually going to give you uh, one question in which you would have to write a computer program to solve a differential equation, perhaps this differential equation. Okay, and I'll give you a sample and you can try to attempt solving such a simple differential equation either in Python, MATLAB, Mathematica, or whatever your software of choice is. So it's gonna be a simple exercise. And I think I you should walk away from this course by having to do some basic numerical computation. So our next goal is to Go to the Hodgkin Huxley model and build a circuit that can explain sodium, potassium, and other channels. Any questions? Chalanji, thank you very much.